Now we move to a submission from Greenpeace, and we have uh, Duncan Curry and Steve Abel appearing for that. Uh, tēnā koroa, Duncan Rauko, Steve. Uh, would you mind, thank you, turning on your video. Uh, kia ora and welcome. Thank you very much for the Greenpeace submission. Uh, thank you for appearing today. And over to you, uh, Duncan and Steve, to present to it and hopefully allow some time for questions within the 10 minutes. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou. Uh, thank you very much for having us. My name is Steve Abel. Um, I'm a Greenpeace senior campaigner with 20 years of experience. And I'm joined by Duncan Curry, who is an international lawyer with nearly 40 years of experience on an environmental law. Um, I firstly want to say that we support completely more Armstrong submission that the term the principles needs to be removed. We simply need to be honouring te tiriti o waitangi in this law and in all law, frankly. Um, members, we're in a twin existential crisis of climate change and biodiversity loss. And unless our core environmental legislation recognizes that by giving the environment precedence, it will not enable the necessary transformation for us to avoid the untold human suffering that 11,000 climate scientists warned us of. We need to change what we are doing and the way we're doing it. While the draft is well intended, it is hampered by an underlying assumption that uh, an anthropocentric attitude of growth and exploitation um, is sustainable in any way. I was born in 1970. Um, in my lifetime, 60% of all animals with a backbone have gone extinct. 80% of freshwater fauna have been wiped out by human activity. That's in my lifetime. Um, things are not getting better. Wild animals make up 4% of the world's mammals and the other 96% is humans and our livestock. Um, because of a synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, we have exceeded the global nitrogen limit. The pattern of re is repeated locally due to intensive dairying. We see our rivers suffer from abstraction and pollution and declines in our freshwater species. And now contamination of drinking water with carcinogenic nitrates. Urban growth is reducing fertile land and biodiversity. Our oceans are littered with plastic and continue to be overfished and have rare deep water habitats bottom trawled out of existence. And if seabed miners have their way, they will also be mined. Climate change and biodiversity loss threaten the integrity of the natural world on which we as a species depend. But humans are not the problem. Our growth consumerist, exploitative form of culture is the problem. We need to move from an, a human-centered to a nature-centered way of doing things. And that's why nature must have the preeminence in our core environmental law. We recognize in terms of climate change that pre-industrial global temperatures were the ideal and we aim to limit global heating to within 1.5 degrees. And yet we forget that it was industrialism that caused the problem and continues to cause the problem. All these reasons, our core environmental law must be bold, forward-looking, ambitious, and above all, must have a thriving natural world at its heart and its first purpose. Um, at the same time, accessibility for public participation is vital and must be streamlined into all areas of the bill. I hand over to Duncan. Thanks, Steve. Kia ora, Duncan. Uh, kia ora, Madam Chair, Tina Koutou, members of the committee, and thank you, Steve. At the outset, I would like to say that I watch Forest and Birds Mission, and I think we're on the same page while we avoid repetition of the same points. To achieve the goal Steve has just outlined, we believe it is essential that all aspects of the proposed reform process be addressed, including the Climate Adaptation Act, the Strategic Planning Act, and of course the NBA. And we believe they should be addressed together to ensure that climate considerations are mainstreamed in the legislation. Otherwise, climate change risks falling between the cracks. Uh, we did see the problems with this piecemeal approach earlier on with the RMA, with the section 104E on the exclusion of climate change from consideration by local authorities. Um, there were then two Supreme Court decisions on it, of course, and it was finally repealed last year. We believe that climate change deserves more than this piecemeal approach. Turning to the first key message that Steve emphasized, our key message here is on the purpose of the act. The current purpose in clause five, we believe is confused. 
and sets Te Aronga to tail against the proposed concurrent and I think seemingly anthropocentric purpose of people and communities to use the environment in a way that supports the well-being of present generations without compromising the well-being of future generations. And crucially, without providing a way of reconciling conflicts between these two purposes. The second purpose in clause five, in the second purpose, the term use is too often a synonym for exploitation of the environment and well-being, a synonym for continuation of our consumerist growth and economic model. And we note the term sustainable is not even used in clause five of the draft. And we can contrast this, of course, with the current RMA purpose in section five being to promote the sustainable management of natural and physical resources. The second limb of this purpose, if the bill remains in this form, should reflect the transformational approach that is necessary for future generations to face the current and impending threats to Aotearoa and to the planet. Already we are awaiting Supreme Court decision on a very analogous question of the relationship of two paragraphs on, in the object of the Exclusive Economic Zone and Continental Shelf Environmental Effects Act. And we know it took 23 years until the Supreme Court ruled in King Salmon on environmental bottom line matters. Turning to public participation in Clause 18, we strongly submit that public participation must be mainstreamed in the Act. Currently, it is, it is almost an afterthought in Clause 18C and is heavily qualified to ensure appropriate participation and processes undertaken under this Act to the extent that it is important to good governance and proportionate to the significance of matters at issue. Instead of this approach, we submit that public participation should reflect the three so-called pillars of the European Aarhus Convention on Access to Information, Public Participation in Decision-Making and Access to Justice in Environmental Matters. Those three pillars, access to information, public participation and access to justice should be mainstreamed in the Act, we believe. For a start, it should be the purpose of the Act and these three core principles, for example, in a new clause to follow, clause seven perhaps, to immediately follow the Tuturiti or Waitangi clause. Our, our final submission is on three aspects. Firstly, on the environmental limits in clause seven. We believe that clause seven's environmental limits approach invites a, invites a race to the bottom rather than having a aim of ecological integrity. And the concept in particular of maximum harm or stress is flawed and we should instead be using minimum harm as a paradigm rather than maximum. Secondly, cumulative impacts is only included in the implementation principles as a matter to which particular regard must be had. We believe it should be included as a central considerations in all environmental outcomes and assessments and should be defined to include all anthropogenic as well as natural cumulative effects to include climate change and ocean acidification. On Clause 8 with national outcomes, we believe these are essentially a laundry list without any hierarchy or prioritisation. And for example, Clause N towards the bottom on the, the protection and sustainable use of the marine environment is really buried and should instead be prioritised. Climate change is the last item and does not expressly call for mitigation. And nor is the protection of biodiversity, particularly indigenous biodiversity, emphasised. And finally, on some matters of definitions, uh, no priority is given to indigenous species or habitat, including the definition of ecological integrity. Mitigation currently includes compensation and offsets, it should not. And the term natural environment needs to be carefully considered and biodiversity is not currently included. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you both. Um, can I just confirm in your submission, you use public participation should be streamlined, but in your oral commentary, you said mainstreamed. Uh, mm -hmm. Streamline suggested it should be cut back. Yeah, um, mainstream is a better word, yes. madam. <laughs> um, so only 2% of uh, consents are generally notified, but we have had other submitters highlighting the cost of the consent process, often because of the planning process. But in terms of mainstreaming it, what additions would you see that aren't currently in the RMA or, or and you mentioned the Aarhus Convention. What would you like to see in terms of that concept of public participation being mainstreamed? Yes, thank, you, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for that. You're right, I think mainstreaming is a better term. Um, we would like to see the express consideration or inclusion rather of these three terms. Um, as we said, right at, at the purpose level of the Act, 
so that it percolates through the entire act. Right now, it really is buried and it should not be qualified in any way, shape or form. Um, and we do note that the Aarhus Policy European Convention is widely, I think, regarded as being the best practice in environmental law worldwide. And quite frankly, if the Europeans can do it, we can do it. And we think it's really important to have that. And, and that means that all environmental decision making must be measured up against these specific parameters of these three pillars. And if they don't, then the decision makers have to go back and, and fix the problem. And we've seen this time and time and again in the Aarhus Convention in Europe, and it works well to ensure public participation in all its forms. Uh, any other questions from members? Thank you um, very much for the submission and the presentation. Um, right. Much appreciated. Kia ora. Kia ora.